Greetings shippers, now I get a lot of requests in the comments. A lot. One show that gets a lot of requests for various pairings is Once Upon a Time. Now this show is a shipping juggernaut, pairings around every corner. With dedicated fan bases for each, people want to hear about Swan Queen, Captain Swan, Outlaw Queen, Rumbell, and we shall indeed. But first, let's take a moment to remember the fallen ships. Pairings that seemed like they had potential, but were quashed. Maybe because a new pairing overtook them. Or maybe, as is often the case with this show, because the writers forgot about one of the characters and just stopped writing them. But they'll reappear someday. Maybe when the plot needs them. But then again, maybe not. So let's take a magical trip through a portal that used to be hard to find, but now is as plentiful as true love. Back to season one. We'll see some ships that almost happened, had some promising starts, but ultimately did not stand the test of time into a mainstream pairing. Spoiler alert, as some of these took a season or two to fully vanish. As a result, if you're not fully caught up and we suddenly have to jump to say season four, hint hint, you may learn some things you didn't want to, so beware. Forewarned is forearmed. Also, sorry if I sound kind of like huskier or muffled. I'm a little sick, but that's okay. I choose to believe that I sound husky and sexy. And that's what I'm going with. Let's go. Let's start with one pairing that was canon, seen, and then never overtly brought up again. Dreamy slash Grumpy and Nova slash Astrid from season one, episode 14, Dreamy. That's right, before Grumpy was, well, Grumpy, he was dreamy, and back in season one, while backstories were still being revealed to the audience, and there were more attempts made at strong overarching arcs and plots, we got this sweet one-off episode about dreamy meeting a fairy named Nova, and both trying to change their destinies. Neither quite fit into their assigned roles. Dreamy questions a bit too much for a dwarf, and Nova is horribly clumsy, and if there's one thing the blue fairy can't tolerate, it's that. Well that, and any form of backtalk or questioning of her authority. You better listen to her or she'll cut your wings off. Nova and Dreamy were forced apart in the Enchanted Forest, but in Storybrooke, they're being given a second chance when Grumpy slash Leroy has to save the hi high school, I mean nunnery, by selling enough co I mean candles to pay the rent. It's, it's cliche, okay. Throughout the episode, the two have a sweet chemistry. Gruff Leroy and innocent perky Astrid. Even though by this point in the show you've seen this backstory before, you still want it to work out. Mostly because Amy Acker is adorable. But alas, you'll never see her again. So basically, after all of this, the episode just becomes a one-off. Leroy's character is developed briefly, but nothing really changes, and you never see Nova again. Pre-lifting of the first curse or after. Which makes this episode ultimately filler. It's too bad, while this pairing wasn't huge or anything in the fan world, it was super cute and had potential and would probably have gotten bigger if depicted a little more, especially in a show with such strong fan bases surrounding actual canon pairings. But oh well, just a dream. That's why he's not dreamy anymore. But let's move on to a pairing that managed to generate a decent amount of fix, gifs, slash gifs, and curiosity, despite the characters again only interacting in one episode. Introducing Mad Swan, the pairing of the Mad Hatter and Emma Swan, from season one, episode 17, Hat Trick. This ship is so wrong, it just might be right. So Emma meets Jefferson, aka the Mad Hatter, who has gone, well, mad, trying to make a magic portal. But as the Earth is a land without magic, he has had no luck. This is pre-believing Emma, so she just thinks he's a crazy person. As well she should, seeing as how he drugs her, and holds her hostage to help him make a hat, oh and has been spying on her for weeks, and kidnapped her roommate. So some of you are probably like, and this is a ship Y, exactly? Three letters. U. S.T. The scenes between the characters are so charged with sexual energy, particularly on Sebastian Stan's part. Because why yes, this is a chance to enjoy pre-winter soldier Sebastian Stan, in period piece-esque clothing and guy liner. Now for some, the edge of violence to these scenes combined with the sexuality put them right off. But for others, it awakened an opening for some scandalous fantasies or even redemption arcs. People wanted to see more of these two together, particularly after Emma realizes everything Jefferson told her was true. The thing is, Sebastian Stan manages to make the Hatter sympathetic, even as he is doing all of these horrible things, leading to many feeling he wouldn't have actually hurt them, which works in this pairing's favor. When you add the redemptive father arc in, it's a recipe for some interesting stories. But why is there so much chemistry in these scenes? Well, many attribute it to the fact that the two actors, Sebastian Stan and Jennifer Morrison, were dating at the time, and some feel that that element of their relationship slipped through and played
played out in the characters' connection to one another, which viewers then subsequently picked up on whether they were aware of the relationship or not. Who knows, that may be the case, but we've all also seen actual couples with the on-screen chemistry of a plain pancake. So it could also have been a deliberate choice. Stan has said he enjoyed the different take on the character, and thought that there were many stories to be told, and more probably would have if he hadn't gotten his big break. Ultimately, when Stan left the show for bigger and in his case better opportunities, the role was never recast, and the Mad Hatter was never seen again, and hasn't been mentioned for many seasons. While it's obviously great for him career-wise, and for Stucky shippers everywhere, for Mad Swan shippers, it was a loss. The pairing kept going for a while, and there are still some shippers on the down low, but the fuel would definitely have been greater if he were still around. And I say that even with the arrival of Captain Guyliner himself, for there are actually some fix out there of the two competing for her, and even some threesome fix. Who knows, he could maybe have given Captain Swan a run for its money. But as it stands, Captain Swan firmly established itself as one of the top ones pairings upon Hook's arrival, and that hasn't changed since. Even if Jefferson were to make a magical return, it's doubtful he could best hook. Something that has been proven by the return of another character who also happened to be paired with Miss Swan. I'm talking, of course, about August Wayne Booth, aka Pinocchio, in the ship known as Wooden Swan. August made his first appearance in Episode 9 of Season 1, True North, and was one of the few characters to be given an extended mystery as to his origin, which ultimately made him much more interesting, and his storyline was very rewarding. Up to a point. More on that later. August slowly begins to develop a friendship and relationship with Emma. Granted, he does this with more knowledge about her than she has about herself, but also from the standpoint of being able to identify with feeling out of place and ultimately being from two worlds, as well as having expectations and responsibilities thrust upon you. The two also have some pretty great chemistry, and as established, August is a very bad boy. Wooden Swan lasted longer than any of the other pairings on this list because as a character, August has also lasted longer, transitioning into Emma's post-first curse awareness in Season 2, which allows for a breadth of stories about the two coming to terms with their dual existences, as well as the triumphs and strides they have both made to become better people. Of course, there are reasons against this pairing. August abandoning Emma as a child, trying to make up for it later by forcing her boyfriend to abandon her pregnant and in jail, and taking the money left for her leaving her with nothing but a car. Still, this pairing has a lot of potential, particularly for those who like stories about growth and enjoy both characters' firm roots in the non-magical world. And August got along great with Henry, another plus. However, August suffered a truly bizarre fate, one that was framed as a reward. August's entire arc was grounded in the Pinocchio mythos. He was struggling to be a good person, and ultimately often failing, because at his core, that wasn't his base inclination. For most of his life, he had failed at it, even his motivations for coming and helping helping Emma had a selfish tint. However, he ultimately comes through and overcomes his nature to do something truly good. And his reward for this is to be turned back into a little boy with no memories of being August at all. So all that he learned, he just forgot, meaning he's free to turn right back into the same man. So basically he's dead. They killed August to bring back Pinocchio. August was no saint, but for many fans, it was a hard pill to swallow that this was his happy ending. So that pairing was halted for a while. Oh, people tried and fixed to fix it for a bit, but turning back into a child to go live with his dad is a pretty hard write around, though some people did do it beautifully. And of course, by this point, again, Captain Swan had begun to take off with its more familiar will they won't they kind of bad boy and good girl dynamic. Also, I cannot overstate, Hook is wearing eyeliner. I mean, I know August had a leather jacket, but it's just not the same. Also, yes, there is much more to Captain Swan than what I just stated. This is the Cliff Notes version of all of these pairings. I'd be happy to do a full vid on any if people want it. As for August, thankfully that wasn't the end of him. He returned in adult form in Season 4, and was reunited with Emma. And their reunion was, well, it reminded many people they had shipped it in the first place. And there were a fair few Emma dumps Killian for August fix out there. Particularly as by Season 4, some had begun to believe that Captain Swan was taking up too much of the show's time and focus. Those people being ones who clearly did not ship it, because even at that point, shippers were demanding even more. And still do. Still, as great as it was to see August again, he has once again vanished to the land of unneeded characters. Which means while he is there, we very rarely see him. Like Archie or Ruby. Thankfully, there has been a rare season six spotting, but we'll see how that goes. Speaking of being written off, an honorable mention needs to go out to the Huntsman. That's right, Christian Grey himself, as the local sheriff who had the hots for Emma, was sleeping with Regina, and whom fans paired with both, as well as Ruby. R.I.P. Sheriff Graham. 
who died back when having a heart crushed into dust was actually disturbing, and not just something that happened almost every episode. The Huntsman seemed like he was going to be a main character, sheriff of the town, involved in relationships with two of the more prominent protagonists of the show's ensemble cast, but no, it was not to be. He actually only made it to episode 7 of season 1, The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. But even though he only lasted 7 episodes, he had already become a fan favorite. The pairing of him and the Queen was angsty, delving into her secret true feelings for him buried in her blackened heart, while his and Emma's surrounded their mutual desire to seek the truth and find justice, and of course there was a fair bit of smut all around. The battle for the Huntsman had the potential to be legendary, even though people already saw more potential in Swan Queen, but fans were also taken with Sheriff Graham. Fix were just beginning to get started when his storyline wrapped up earlier than anyone thought it would. However, I think the saddest thing about the Huntsman's death isn't all the burgeoning ships it quashed, but the fact that he didn't even get an on-screen funeral. In a show that is all about massive funeral sequences for characters who don't even actually stay dead, for one character who actually hasn't come back to not get an on-screen farewell, ouch. As one can imagine, at the time, there were hate messages and tweets galore to the show, but to no avail. The show had an arc it was pursuing, and other opportunities were awaiting Jamie Dornan. This gets an honorable mention, because while he definitely got fridged to advance Emma's character, the changes it made, such as her as sheriff, the further establishing of the heart mythology, and the actual creation of stakes, which ended up vanishing later, but nevertheless, were all positive additions. Sure, they could probably have kept him around, but let's be honest, we probably still wouldn't see him much. Characters on this show can vanish for entire seasons. Remember Lily? Yeah, exactly. As for once, the ships sail on, and will continue to do so. There's just something about this show that makes fans want to pair everyone with everyone else. If you can think it, at least one other person ships it. But for each crop of ships, only a handful stand the test of time and remain dominant. Each season has its casualties. This was just season one, and I didn't even touch upon some of the really obscure ones. Let me know if you enjoyed a look back at these now adrift ships, and share some of your favorite, less active pairings that you still love on this or any show or in any medium down below. Also below, share if you want more vids like this, because this was a lot of fun to make, and it really cheered me up when I wasn't feeling great. This was Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on social media to stay up to date, and as always, stay tuned, for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.